Robin Thicke is actually a pretty talented singer-songwriter and producer. His resume is really nothing to scoff at, although that tends to be all that people do to him nowadays, and there's no one else to blame for that but Robin. He was once an R&B starlet before he would cross over into mainstream pop and reinvent his image to reach the masses. His tumble from grace was quite sudden and even jarring to watch. What went wrong? Let's start from the beginning. Robin Thicke was no small town dude. His dad is 80s actor Alan Thicke and his mother's actress and singer Gloria Loring. Robin was mentored by R&B singer Brian McKnight as a young teenager and co-wrote songs for him. He eventually secured a record deal at the young age of 16 and he began making a name for himself by writing and producing for some big named R&B and pop acts. Brandy, Christina Aguilera, Jordan Knight, Maya, Color Me Bad, and he even wrote a song for Michael Jackson, which was recorded by the King of Pop, but never made the cut for his 2001 album Invincible. In 2002, Robin released his debut album, A Beautiful World, which had his future wife Paula Patton posing nude on the cover. Robin's image from his debut is completely different than what he would come to be known as. He didn't have the polished look of a celebrity and was much more of the dude next door. He looked like a broke college kid. The material that he was releasing wasn't really strong material either. It's also important to mention he was literally just going by his last name. Just Thick. That is a terrible stage name on its own. Especially for a young artist during that time or any time. Can you imagine someone coming up to you and asking, have you heard that new Thick record? It doesn't even sound like a good stage name. Robin would go on to work with stars like Usher, producing and writing on his 2004 magnum opus, Confessions. He would also collaborate with artists like Mary J. Blige and Lil Wayne, so he was slowly climbing up and making a bigger name for himself. After some label trouble, he would eventually sign to Star Trek, a record label founded by the Neptunes. He would release his second album, The Evolution of Robin Thicke, nearly three years after his first album. It was indeed an evolution for Robin. He started dressing like Michael Buble and stopped looking like a college kid who hadn't showered in a few weeks, and his music was much more straightforward R&B, a definite change from his first record. It was the second single from this record titled Lost Without You that would finally land him a commercial breakthrough. It's a sleek R&B jam. It took off at the perfect time, and it's easily something I could imagine Justin Timberlake singing during that time. It has that similar use of falsetto and a similar soundscape to some of the work. The evolution of Robin Thicke was a slow-burning success, which eventually led him to platinum glory. Robin would eventually become a supporting act on Beyonce's tour, so he was slowly attaining more mainstream outreach. From 2008 to 2011, Robin would release albums. Some of these albums took on a more noticeably sexual theme, like on 2009's Sex Therapy. But none of the albums ever really had a pop crossover. They were much more popular amongst the R&B audiences. It wasn't until 2013's Blurred Lines that his career would be catapulted to a major global audience, and just as quickly as he rose with Blurred Lines becoming a juggernaut, seemed like the harder he fell. Blurred Lines is a career-defining song and a decade-defining song for many different reasons. It is to this day the 14th biggest song to be released in the 2010s decade, and it is certified diamond in America alone for sales over 10 million copies. But in the end, the song that built Robin Thicke up will ultimately lead to effectively and permanently tainting his music career. Blurred Lines features super musician Pharrell and rapper T.I. The song instantly received comparisons to Marvin Gaye's 1977 classic single, Got To Give It Up which resulted in a lawsuit with Marvin Gaye's estate that has been debated and denounced by musicians worldwide, with fear that the effect of the lawsuit could punish songwriters for creating music inspired by older works. Many people felt it was wrong and that you cannot copyright a feeling, which Pharrell himself felt was the deciding factor since Blurred Lines did not copy the lyrics or melody of Marvin Gaye's hit. Ultimately, the Marvin Gaye estate won the lawsuit, resulting in a multi-million dollar payout and Marvin Gaye being credited as a songwriter on the track. The music video for Blurred Lines also caused a big stir due to it objectifying women. I'm really shocked that the video actually got so much backlash considering it's not really anything different from what we've seen from rap stars, pop stars, 
and rock stars decades prior before Blurred Lines even existed. But the real outcry with the song came from the lyrical content itself. I have to admit, my initial interpretation of this song was pretty innocent. There have been many different interpretations of the song and the lyrics. I initially just thought that the song was talking about a woman who meets a man that she finds attractive and she wants to release her inner sexual side. I also thought that the lyrics were just explaining a simple sexual encounter, especially with the lyrics being, but you're a good girl, the way you grab me, must want to get nasty, go ahead get at me. I never really gave this song much energy even at its prime. I never really thought about how it could be perceived. At the very least, the song is extremely sleazy. At the very worst, it alludes to sexual har- or abuse. I think if the I Know You Want It chorus was changed, it could have possibly been received better and not have clouded such a dim light over the song. Because there are certainly lyrics that could be taken out of context and be applied to women in a disgusting manner. Or in context, whatever you make of the song. Looking back, I definitely think it has some questionable lyrics. Pharrell has said that he didn't really understand the initial backlash. And he also pointed out that women have used similar lyrical content such as the I Know You Want It line. Let's take a trip down memory lane to some mainstream pop songs that may not have been received as well if a man sung them, and we will discuss why that is the case. Like for instance, if a man had sung Hands to Myself by Selena Gomez, which came out three years after Blurred Lines, it would not have been received well. I don't even think the lyrical context would matter to people because no one wants to hear about a man not wanting to keep his hands to himself in any capacity or context due to so many women being harmed by that very action and it becoming more of a conversation in this cultural climate. Now that's not to say no one wants to hear men talk about sex because that's simply not true, but there's plenty of ways to be freaky, risky, or even raunchy without coming across so perverse. A lot of core R&B acts are great at doing that. I also think about songs like Ain't My Fault by Zara Larson, where the song begins by saying, It ain't my fault you keep turning me on. It ain't my fault you got me so gone. It ain't my fault I'm not leaving you alone. It ain't my fault you keep turning me on. And the reason I've brought these songs as examples up is to highlight the differences in public reaction, but similarity in lyrical content. Nonetheless, the context of the lyrics hindered none of these songs from becoming major hits. And there's an obvious difference between women talking about sex and men talking about sex in music and in real life. Sure, the lyrics may be similar and bear content, but it is not the same culturally or socially. Usually, women are using the lyrics in a manner that allows them to be in control of their sexuality and invite a love or sex interest into their bedroom or allure. When men sing lyrics like this, they take on a whole different meaning because they're usually using the words to be a creep, a douchebag, or a criminal. Whenever I hear that I know you want it hooked now, I just instantly think of a woman being catcalled by a man. I would say it also doesn't help the song's legacy that one of the featured artists, T.I., currently has over 30 people accusing him of abuse, from kidnapping to intimidation. It is insane. Outside of the questionable lyrics, Blurred Lines is a well-produced, catchy, and familiar track, so I see why it became a popular hit, along with the infamous music video. Literally everything that could go wrong with this song went wrong. And it just so happened to be the song that really put Robin Thicke on the map. Imagine this chaos being your career peak. Speaking about the song, Thicke said, For all and I have never and would never write a song with any negative connotation like that. I think the song on its own, I don't think that would have existed. Once the video came out, that changed the conversation. Pharrell defended the song for years, stating, In blurred lines, the Robin Thicke lyrics are, you don't need no papers, meaning you are not a possession. That man is not your maker, meaning he is not God, nor can he produce children or women, for that matter. He's a man. 
So he definitely did not make you. When you pull back and look at the entire song, the point is, she's a good girl, and even good girls want to do things, and that's where you have the blurred lines. She expresses it in dancing because she's a good girl. People who are agitated just want to be mad, and I accept their opinion. I appreciate everything Blurred Lines became. Eventually in 2019, Pharrell would distance himself from the song. There are women who really like the song and connect to the energy that just gets you up. And I know you want it. Women sing those kinds of lyrics all the time. So it's like, what's f***y about that? And then I realized that there are men who use that same language when taking advantage of a woman. And it doesn't matter that that's not my behavior or the way I think about things. It just matters how it affects women. And I was like, got it, I get it, cool. My mind opened up to what was actually being said in the song and how it can make someone feel. Even though it wasn't the majority, it didn't matter. I realized that we live in a chauvinist culture in our country. Hadn't realized that. Didn't realize that some of my songs catered to that. So that blew my mind. Pharrell has every right to change his feeling about the song, but his newer stance on the song just feels very performative. Pharrell is an industry vet, a legendary producer. He has been around hip hop stars, pop stars. He's worked with literally everyone and seems to be a very smart man. And he's also nearly 50. So this whole I woke up one day and found out sexism exists and men can use these type of words to hurt women, I just don't fully buy it. Sure, he could have a better understanding of how people perceived it now, but the whole completely oblivious stance just seems a bit performative. But after losing millions of dollars and gaining bad publicity due to the song, it's very obvious why Pharrell would distance himself from the song. Blurred Lines is like an entire career assessment within itself. It's the disaster that kept giving. It birthed the infamous yet iconic 2013 Blurred Lines performance with Miley Cyrus, which had her twerking on Robin Thicke with a middle foam finger. Looking back, the performance is truly terrible and very messy. But it broke the internet, receiving over 300,000 tweets per minute, and contributed more to the song's success. Blurred Lines the album was released in 2013 and would do decently well with it mostly being driven to success by the title track. The following year, his career and personal life would take a turn for the worst. After 21 years together and almost 9 years of marriage, Paula Patton filed for divorce from Thicke in 2014. Robin Thicke admittedly began using drugs around the success of Blurred Lines, and he became overwhelmingly arrogant, which eventually led to his marriage falling apart and his seventh album, Paula. Paula the album is a pathetic, personal, and embarrassing plea for his estranged lover to come back to him. He wrote all the songs in three weeks, and recorded the entire album in about a month, and it shows. Breakup albums are particularly ingrained into R&B culture, and when done right, they can lead to never-before-seen career highs, like Usher's 2004 Confessions. But Paula, although being an honest effort, operates more as a public campaign to win Paula Patton back, instead of a true and blue breakup record. Thicke finds himself positioned in between victimhood and accountability, where he often wants to play both sides of the fence. At times, it's fully self-aware, and other times, Thicke is throwing whatever might stick to the wall in hopes of rekindling his lost love. Perhaps some of the album would have fared well if the music was simply better, but sometimes it can just feel like a hodgepodge of different emotions. In the worst way possible, it does not stick to the theme. The album was not successful in his attempts to win his ex-wife back, and was a massive failure, notably selling 24,000 copies in its first week of release in the US, 530 copies in the UK, 550 copies in Canada, and 158 in Australia in its debut week. Thick regrets the album. I was struggling through my toughest time and I decided to share it. In hindsight, the only thing I would have done differently was, I wouldn't have promoted it or sold it, he said in the interview. I would have given it away. That would have kept the purity of the message intact. In regards to Paula the person, they are not together, but they are in a better place now and have been co-parenting their son. Robin released an album in 2021 and is now a judge on the popular show The Masked Singer, which showcases him in a much more positive and refined light. 
he doesn't seem nearly as unbearable as the Blurred Lines era. After the success initially went to his head, he was quickly humbled. He never had a Blurred Lines sized hit again and most likely never will. But for Robin, that seems like the best case scenario. 